Bible Read Along, committed to developing Christ-centered, Bible-based, Spirit-filled believers who love God, love His Word, and love sharing it with others. BibleReadalong.com Good Biblical Morning! Yeah, welcome back! Or maybe, welcome for the first time to Bible Read Along. We are so glad you are here. What do we do at Bible Read Along? Well, the name kind of says it. Bible, read along. We want you to read along, but we take one chapter of Scripture each and every day. We try to understand the context. We try to understand application. And we just try and learn from God's Word to let it change us, to mold us, to shape us so that we are Bible-based, Christ-centered, Spirit-filled Christians. And so if that's what you're here for, great, you are definitely in the right place. And today we are looking at Acts, the other way, Acts chapter 14 today, Acts chapter 14. So we are halfway through the book of Acts. And so grab a Bible, grab a pen, highlighter. Um, if you live in Alberta, you might need a snow shovel this morning. We have about four inches of snow, um, wet, heavy snow. I am so over winter, so done with it, but it has snowed and it is still snowing right now. Um, what is the weather like where you are? For our American friends, you may need to convert it to Celsius for the rest of the world, but... Tell us what, what is the weather like where you are right now here? It is probably freezing, I'm guessing. Minus three. So it is three degrees below freezing here this morning. Um, yeah, so that's what we woke up to. More snow. I mean, I shouldn't say woke up to. It started yesterday and it has continued. So a couple quick announcements. We have the Acts of Prayer course coming at the end of the month and early next month. That's April online. Please register. There is a link attached. Um, please register for this. You can do that at BibleReadalong.com or just right through the Google Forms registration that we have set up. Um, I hope we're still live. I'm losing... I think we're reconnected. I don't know why it does not like that, but I think we are reconnected. So the Acts of Prayer course, what is this? It is a one-time free course, uh, and it is about two hours long to actually learn prayer, the history of prayer, why we pray, biblical prayers, and then the ACTS model of prayer, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, supplication. And this is a system, there are many systems and structures of prayer, but this is a system of prayer that could help you grow, help take your personal prayer to a new level. And so whether you are online or in person, we would love to have you. In person is at 10 a.m., online is at 3 p.m. Pacific or 6 p.m. Eastern time. So middle of the afternoon on Sunday, May 1st, and we would love to have you Join us for that. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. So check that out. Also visit our website if you haven't already. There are Bible notebooks available. The Acts of Prayer book is available. Links to all our social media, Facebook, YouTube, um, podcast, TikTok. And if you would like to donate or give into this ministry, you can do that right through, um, right through, BibleReadalong.com. You can just give right there. You can choose to give a one-time gift or a monthly donation to help spread the gospel of Jesus Christ and the train people in the word of God. <coughs> Excuse me. Around the world. Around the world. Okay, let us pray. We need to catch my breath. So maybe before we pray, let's go over to the chat here for a second. Got some friends and regulars here. Mike Markey, so glad you're here. Rachel, welcome. Valentina is in California. Mercury, welcome. AKA Trish. 
Uh, Valentina says it's in the 70s in California. Again, for the rest of the world. 70 degrees Fahrenheit to Celsius. Let's see what it says. Oh, it's not going to show me. i got to actually go into the website here. About 22 degrees. That's like, yeah, that's short weather, spring weather for Canada. Um, about 22 degrees. So that's very nice. And yeah, wow, snow. I know, grr, we have had enough of it for sure. Flowers are blooming in Connecticut. Tulips, daffodils, fericia, cherry blossom trees. It's time to start mowing the lawn. Well... We thought we were close here. It had warmed up. We thought we were close and back to cold, back to snow, back to freezing weather. Um, yeah, so not so fun. Morning, Matthew Baker. Okay, let's pray and then get into the word of God this morning. Father, we just love you. We adore you. We worship you because you are God. You are worthy. You are holy and mighty. And God, we set our eyes and our focus on you, the everlasting God. Father, we come and we just, we confess our need for you. We are in need of your word, in need of your spirit, and that you are the only source that can give that to us. Thank you, God, for meeting with us in this time, Lord, and that you bring your spirit. And we just ask that you fill each and every one of us with every need that is every need that is in us that you would fill it lord spiritual emotional physical healings wholeness in jesus name amen amen for those of you that are paying closer attention yes i just prayed the acts model of prayer the acts adoration confession thanksgiving supplication Real easy to do, makes it a great way to pray, great prayer tool. We got that prayer course coming up at the end of, we are only a couple weeks away. And uh, we would love to have you come join us for the Acts of Prayer course. All right, now let's get to the book of Acts, the biblical, the Acts of the Apostle, the Acts of the Holy Spirit, um, the Acts of the Church. This book has actually had a few different names historically, but... Uh, Acts is kind of where they've ended. Acts chapter 14. Here we go. If you are ready, you know what to do. Hit that thumbs up. Type in the chat. Praise God today. That's what we're typing in the chat. Praise God. And let's go. Let's do this. Did my comment work? Nope. My comments aren't working today. Oh, there it goes. All right. So Paul has been sent out by the church. Um, he is traveling with Barnabas. And what we are hearing is kind of just the stories of some of his travels now. So it says he went to place after place after place. And we're hearing the stories of what's happening. So in Iconium or Isonium, not quite sure how they would have pronounced that back then, but I am pronouncing it. Iconium. At Iconium, Iconium, Paul and Barnabas went as usual. It's not unusual to be in church once a week. Da 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 da. Okay. Um, but they went as usual, as was their custom, as was their habit, some translations say. In other words, Paul and Barnabas regularly were in the synagogue, as was they went as usual into the Jewish synagogue. There they spoke into the Jewish synagogue. Sorry, I totally read that wrong. They went into the Jewish synagogue and then there they spoke so effectively that a great number of Jews and Greeks believed. But the Jews who refused to believe stirred up the other Gentiles and poisoned their minds against their brothers. So what are they that the, we're hearing here? Not only that they are now opposing Paul and Barnabas at Iconium, but they are actually causing trouble. They're poisoning minds and division. And they're saying, oh, it's not just about Paul and Barnabas. Now it's like, oh, your brother, John, he believes those nutcases. He's a, and it begins to bring division among families, friends. This is still 
a strategy of politics and and the world today you know bring division put people against their families against their friends make issues become so strong that you have to pick a side and you have to it just this is not godliness they stirred up their mind poisoned their minds against their brothers verse 3 so paul and barnabas sent spent considerable time there speaking boldly for the lord who confirmed the message of his grace by enabling them to perform signs and wonders the people of the city were divided some sided with the jews others with the apostles there was a plot afoot there's a plot afoot among both gentiles and jews together with their leaders to mistreat them and stone them so this division has risen so much that there actually is those leading the division are also now wanting violence they found out about it and so paul and barnabas found out about it and they fled to lysico i don't know how to say this one Lyconian cities of Lyconian cities of Lystra and Derb and the surrounding count country where they continued to preach the gospel interesting that the mission didn't change they they're opposing fear they're opposing violence they're opposing division and they didn't go well i guess it's time to quit no they went we may need to escape here we may need to run away but we are going to continue to do what we are called to do preach the gospel of jesus christ that's it in lystra and derb verse 8 in lystra there sat a man who was lame he had been that way from birth and had never walked he listened to Paul as he was speaking and Paul looked directly directly at him saw that he had faith to be healed. Now what does this show us? This is an interesting little phrase here because he you can see faith. That's an interesting thought. Well, I thought you couldn't so faith must produce something in us that could be seen or Paul is actually seeing into the spiritual realm. Paul is seeing something spiritual, having a vision or a, you know, his eyes are open spiritually to see this man's faith. <coughs> Excuse me, saw that he had faith to be healed and he called out, stand up on your feet. At that, the man jumped up and began to walk. When the, pr when the crowd saw that Paul had done what they, Paul had done, they shouted, in the Laconian language, the gods have come down to us in human form. Now, yes, they are correct, but they're wrong about which gods. Um, let's get into this because they're, they're, they're talking about Paul and Barnabas. <laughs> and Paul and Barnabas are going to just point them back to Jesus. Barnabas, they called Zeus. <laughs> Barnabas they called Zeus and Paul they called Hermes because he was the chief speaker Greek gods the priest of Zeus whose temple was just outside the city brought bowls and brought bowls and wreaths like cows bowls and wreaths to the city gates because he had the crowd wanted to offer sacrifices to them so these people actually believe they are from their own Greek gods but when the apostles, Barnabas and Paul, heard of this, they tore their clothes. Sign of mourning, sign of, of deep distress. They tore their clothes. They rushed into the crowd shouting, friends, why are you doing this? We too are only human like you. We are bringing you good news, telling you to turn from these worthless things to the living God who made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. In the past, he let all nations go their own way. Yet he had not left himself without testimony. He has shown kindness by giving you rain from heaven and crops in the season. So what is he saying here? Not only turn to the living God, 
who created the heavens, the earth, the, the God who led nations and let them do their own thing for generations. <laughs> the God who, sorry, I had to blow my nose. Let the God, um, the God who let nations rise and fall. And not only is he, he's not gone. He's not a God that's far off. He has proved his faithfulness by giving rain and food and crops. And, and he goes on. He provides you with plenty of food and he fills your hearts with joy. Verse 18. Even with these words, they had difficulty keeping the crowd from sacrificing to them. They are recognizing that Paul and Barnabas are doing supernatural things. So they think they are gods. Then... Some Jews came from Antioch and Iconium and won the crowd over. What a, what a testimony here. When you are having troubles, when people misunderstand you, even in a good sense, look, we think you're gods. When people misunderstand and they have a wrong idea of you, bring in support and friends that are going to reaffirm who you actually are. This is good wisdom. This is why we need community. They stoned Paul. Okay, then some Jews came from Antioch and Iconium and won the crowd over. These are the Jews that are actually, I was wrong, sorry. These are not Paul and Barnabas' friends. These are the Jews that wanted to cause division. These are the ones that they had just run from and hid. So they came and they stoned Paul. Again, what does this mean? They took stones, threw it at him, large handheld stones, whipping them at him, crushing, breaking bones. They stoned Paul and then they dragged him out of the city thinking he was dead. This is an interesting little story here because either they thought he was dead. I mean, this wasn't new to them. They had stoned people before. But verse 20, after the disciples had gathered around him to pray, he got up and went back into the city. The next day he and Barnabas left for Derb. Um, is this a resurrection? Many scholars actually think so. They believe that he was dead. And the people prayed, the, 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 the disciples prayed, and he was raised up. The return to Antioch in Syria. They preached the gospel in that city and they won, won a large number of disciples. Then they returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, strengthening the disciples and encouraging them to remain True to the faith. Now that you found faith, stay true. Stay focused on it. Don't be distracted. Don't fall away. We must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God, they said. Paul and Barnabas appointed elders. Uh-oh, systems and structures. Um, they ordained elders is the, the context note here. Um, for them in each, where? In each church. Dun, dun, dun. Well, what is this referring to? Well, yes, this could be referring to a group of people, but likely this is referring to an actual building that they are starting to meet together in churches. They are starting to gather. And we see this, again, system structure. Apostles, we see elders, we see a system in place, we see they ordain them. So there's a process to pick them and to, you know, equip them. Um, anyways, and then church. And so sometimes modern, there's a, there is people out there that go off on the wrong thing. And they, they misrepresent even the book of Acts. Well, they didn't meet in churches. They met in homes and they, we shouldn't, we shouldn't be going to church. We should just be meeting in homes. And, and then even if we meet together, even in a, in a pub, a pub could be church and the theater can be church and us going to a hockey or sports game could be church because we are Christians and we gather together. Isn't that the church? No, no, it's not. That's not the church that we see in Acts. It's not the church that was established by the apostles, the disciples, the early fathers of faith. It's not the church that they fought for, lived for, died for. It's not the church that we see modeled throughout the entire New Testament. It is a misrepresentation. So we see systems, elders, leaders, 
you know, anointing, appointing processes. The church, they send them in and they appointed elders for each church and with prayer and fasting, committed them to the Lord in whom they had put their trust. After going through Pisidia, they came to Pamphylia, and when they had preached the word in Perga, and went down to Attilia. So again, more journeys for Paul and Barnabas. From Attilia, they sailed back to Antioch, where they had been committed to the grace of God for the work they had now completed. Interesting, God gives us tasks that can be completed. He also gives us tasks that are ongoing. <laughs> keep being faithful to the word. They, they taught that earlier. Keep staying true to the faith. But there are tasks that God gives us that can be completed. On arriving there, they gathered the church together. Now this might be talking about the people because of the context here. They gathered the church together, but where would they have gathered? In the church. I believe church is both and. Are we the church? Yes, 100%. Do we meet in church? Yes, 100%. We are the, the people of God, but we are the called out, assembled, gathered together, trained, equipped, and sent out once. That is the church. So we gather together for these things. Um, on arriving there, they gathered the church together and reporting all that God had done through them and how he had opened a door of faith to the Gentiles, and they stayed there a long time with the disciples. So what happened here? What are we even seeing here? From Attilia, they sailed back to Antioch. This is where they started. This is where the church started, where Christians were first called Christians. Um, why did they come back to Antioch? Because the work was completed. They went everywhere they were sent to do. And what did they do when they came back? They gave a report. They reported all that God... In other words, this, this to me, again, still shows system and structure. The, the elders had prayed for Paul and Barnabas. They fasted, prayed, and sent them out. They probably gave them financial support as well. And we learned that later from Paul, but I'm assuming there was some financial support. <coughs> <coughs> And Paul raised financial support from other churches. And Paul also had a part-time job making tents. Paul was creating income so that he could do the work of God. And they went, they traveled, they did what they were told to do, what they said they were going to do. They came back. They came back and they reported to the elders and the church that had sent them out. This, to me, again, shows system and structure. What do you see in this chapter? That is that is the chapter of Acts 14. What do you see? Paul and them traveling. Paul stoned. Division among the people. Um, then Paul got stoned. I should put that in the right order. Politics, crowd, division, um, false... They think they are false gods. They think they are Zeus and Hermes. Um, they're doing signs and wonders. What, what, what stood out to you in Acts 14? What do you get out of this that you go, I need to apply that to my life? Please take a minute, share it with us. Don't just think about it personally. If you are willing, share it in the chat um, so that we can talk about it and learn and grow from each other. So if you have questions or comments, put them in. If you'd like to answer the question, what stood out to you, put it in the chat. Or if you want to answer the question, what can you apply to your life today? Put it in the chat. We would love to hear from you. And while we are doing that and waiting again, please go check out BibleReadAlong.com and consider Maybe some of you are getting tax returns, things like that. Would you consider being our support system? We do not make money off of this. We are not taking a paycheck out of this. Literally, this is to help us do courses and books. And, you know, all of the cost right now is, is to help spread the word. And if you would like to partner with that and help with that, we welcome that. That's welcomed on BibleReadAlong.com where um, 
You can give a one-time gift, monthly gift. You can purchase the books and sign up for the prayer course, which is absolutely free at the end of April and the first day of May online. So we would love to see you connect with that. All right, let's go to, I saw Mike Markey put a comment here. Mike says, I see that they had vision. I love that, Mike, because we need vision. They had vision to go be anointed. They had vision to go out. They had a vision to keep going. They had vision that even when trouble came and opposed them, they should have, they could have said, okay, people are trying to kill us. Let's quit. Let's go home. We're done. They said, nope, on to the next place. This is what we're going to do. They had vision even to the point of Paul being stoned, I believe, to death or at least near death and was raised up in a miracle either way, either from death or in healing and um, went right back into the city and then continued on with his trip. Vision. Without vision, the people perish. And that's, that is a biblical principle that we see throughout the Bible. Um, Matthew says, I'm wondering why Paul got stoned. Um, he got stoned because we, we learned in Acts 13, the Jewish leaders invited him and he came and he spoke in their church. Then what happened is the whole city showed up and they got jealous because he was getting better results than they had ever had. He was seeing people changed and, and signs and wonders and, and it made them look bad and they became jealous and they began to sow division. And the division continued, continued, divide, divide, divide until it reaches a point of violence. And that violence came out against Paul being stoned. Mercury says the church, we are the church, but we can't be the church just sitting at home. I fully agree. And thank you for saying that. And and I like I said, for me, it's both and. You need to make your own decisions based on scripture and study. But for me, I see we are the church, but we can't be that church unless we are called out, gathered together, and then sent out to others. And so there is a job for the church to do. There is a purpose for the church, and we need to gather together. Now, listen, we just came through COVID, and I know many people are doing online church this is an online ministry, Bible read along, and we are connecting and we try to build relationship. Is it the same as in person? No, it's not even close. Can it, can it be beneficial? Yes. Can you learn from this? Yes. Can you grow and build friendships and connection from this? Yes. But it is not the same as in person. And if you are going, I'm online, that's my church, that's my, I think you are doing yourself a disservice. It's not hurting the, I, well, I should say that it is hurting you and it's probably hurting the church. You need the church, but the church, the gathered, assembled, called out, sent out individuals also need you. They need your giftings. They need your, their, your personality. They need your prayers. They need your commitment. They need you serving. And so there is both benefits. It benefits us individually. It benefits us corporately and absolutely right, Mercury. We are called to be the church, and then we are called to gather as the church, and we need both. And so if you've been at home, maybe COVID has changed your church routine. Maybe it's time to come back. Maybe it's time to try again. Maybe it's time to connect with either the church you've been a part of previously or find a church that you can connect with. Um, that doesn't mean you have to give up online. Again, to me, things are more often a both and rather than an either or. That's it for today. If you had any other thoughts, questions, please put them in. If you are listening to this later on Facebook, watching this later, please just type in the chat replay. We would love to hear from you and your questions and thoughts as well. Comments are welcome on YouTube. Podcasts are available with Spotify, Apple, Google, all the main podcast platforms we would love for you to subscribe there and if you use tiktok please follow us there as well um, that is a different venue uh, we need to get to a thousand followers on tiktok before we can even go live um, we've been on tiktok for just over a week week and a half now and we are at about 160 i think followers so it's growing but it's going to take some time for us to build momentum there. And then once we can go live, this 
will actually be live on on um, TikTok as well. And so uh, we'll be working with that and I got to figure all that out. But it just gives us an opportunity to reach even more people with the gospel of Jesus Christ, with the news of the Bible, training people to become Bible-based, Christ-centered, spirit-filled believers that can go out and change the world around them. So, um, yeah, that's it for today. I just saw last comment from Trish here, Mercury. My church closed in December and I'm still looking around. It's a difficult decision. I am so sorry to hear that. I hate hearing any church close. And maybe that's your, maybe that's the problem. Maybe it's not that you've chosen a different church. Your church is actually closed. And that is not necessarily a decision that should be made lightly. You're right. That is a tough decision. So we are praying for you in this time, Trish, that you just find the right people, the right place to connect, that it bring you life, that you bring them life, and that it just be, that it feel like your home, your tribe, your, your people, so that you can just grow and keep moving forward in your faith and lead others to do the same as well. All right, guys, that's it. God bless. Thank you so much for being part of this. I don't take that lightly. If you're enjoying this, share it with others on whatever platform you're listening or watching and keep coming back. We hope to see you tomorrow as we continue the book of Acts with chapter 15. God bless. Bible Read Along. Committed to developing Christ-centered, Bible-based, Spirit-filled believers who love God, love His Word, and love sharing it with others. BibleReadalong.com